Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Million Dollar Body Podcast, the intersection of physical and financial success. I'm Nate Palmer. If you're here, it's probably because you're a high performer, dad, entrepreneur, business owner, family man with a business that's interested in gaining an unfair advantage in your life using fitness and nutrition as force multipliers. If you're not part of the Facebook group, definitely go to n8trainingsystems.com slash group. That's where we stream these podcast episodes every Tuesday. Join in, ask questions, post stuff, have me send you pictures of my face, you know, all kinds of things. A massive amount of free information, a bunch of resources in there. So make sure you join us at n8trainingsystems.com slash group. If you're already in the group watching it live, super excited to have you because today we're talking about the how to unlock your body's hidden mechanism for more energy via fat incineration. How do we use fat to unlock the secret mechanism, the, the, the secret process in your body to like get more focused and more energetic? Before we do that, before we dive in, I want to give a shout out to the members of the Million Dollar Body Jumpstart. So I've got a couple of people in there just killing it right now. Casey, Izzy, Javi, Amber, Jen, and other Jen. You guys are doing so great. I think it seems like the average weight loss for week one alone was like between four and six pounds. A lot of people coming at the five pound mark. I'm also loving seeing all the posts for you guys tagging me on like your your uh, improved workout times or more workout reps and stuff like that. So just awesome job, y'all. Keep it up. The energy's high and I love it. You might be doing another jump start come middle of September. So if, you, if you're interested or on the fence about any of that, let us know and I can give you some more information or push on a list. Without further ado, let's talk about the body's hidden mechanism for more energy via fat incineration. Okay. And I think that this is a topic that doesn't get enough, enough press. Because here's why. When we're talking about nutrition, we're talking about it in one of two ways. Number one, we're saying nutrition or diet or some, or food, I want it. I'm hungry for it. I would like to eat a taco right now because I would like to have a taco in my mouth. I like to chew it. I like to swallow it. I want to eat French fries. I want to have a Cinnabon. And that road leads to the dark side. Because if all we're doing is ever just going down the road of like seeing talking about what we want to eat, what we'd like to consume, what, what delectable taste we would love to perceive on our taste buds, then we've already, we're already lost. We're already playing from behind because food scientists, people who design crackers and cookies and different things like that, make them hyper palatable using the right combinations of sugar, fat, and salt. So that way, when you're, when you're talking about what foods you like, well, of course you like French fries. They're chemically designed in a way that you have to like them. You don't like French fries, you're a liar. Don't lie to me. You like French fries. Everyone likes French fries because they're designed, they're built in a lab somewhere by someone who's like, you know who's going to like this? Joe. Joe's going to like this. And so we're just, we're playing from behind. Okay. So that's one way of looking at, at our nutrition. The other way of looking at it is diet mentality, diet culture, which I hate it. I hate it. I'm against it because I've, I've, you probably heard me rage about this before, but like all that is, is about becoming less, dropping, be, becoming like, so put ourselves into a box that society's like, you're too much, you're too this, you gotta be become like, you gotta fit into our mold of you. And I hate that idea of becoming less. I wanna use nutrition as a way of becoming more. And that's this middle ground that we don't speak about, okay? And so I don't just wanna think about like, you're like, well, I don't wanna be a bodybuilder. I'm not just trying to gain a bunch of size. Yeah, I mean, most of us are trying to drop fat. So, but that doesn't mean that dropping fat has to equal becoming less. Most of the time, what we want to do is as we're dropping fat, we want to become more, right? We want to become more confident, more lean, more athletic, more, um, more energetic, more feelings of, you know, intense moral superiority, you know, over people who don't exercise or not, maybe that, not that last one, but we want to use this as a way of bolstering the things that are already important to us. Now, there's a couple people who I know are listening to this right now who are weirdos, and if you're like, is it me? It's probably you. You're probably a weirdo. And that's okay. Weirdos are great. I love weirdos. I'm a weirdo myself. If you don't know that yet, then you probably haven't watched enough of the, listened enough of the podcast or you've spent enough time with me. But I'm a super weird guy and that's fine. I like it. I like it that way. And you're probably weird too because if, if you like exercise, that makes you a weird person because most of us don't like exercise. So if you like exercise, awesome, amazing, great for you. But if you don't like exercise, we need to connect exercise to the things that you do like. So maybe it's being a dad, maybe it's being a business owner, maybe it's being engaged in one of these different like metrics in your life or having these things that you're like, I'm, I, I'm passionate about this thing. Well, I guarantee you training more is going to help you be better at that thing. 
Okay, unless it's like, I like, you know, being a food, like Joey Chestnut style food challenge guy. Okay, maybe I don't know. I don't know about that one, but everything else, being a better, being a better parent, being a better spouse, being a better, being like a better at your trade, whatever work you're in, like you're gonna be better, exercise is gonna connect that. So if we can connect not only nutrition, but also exercise to becoming more, then we're on the right path to unlocking this secret thing, the secret hidden, this hidden, this hidden thing that we don't talk about. No one talks about in the media because it's not, it's not sexy. It's not fear-based, right? We're trying to create, we're trying to grow, we're trying to enhance rather than tear down, become less, become like fit yourself a good box. And so if you can, if you can disregard the, I want it, I got to have it. And also the, I need to become less. So I'm only going to eat broccoli and tilapia for the next three months. If you can take those, put those out of the picture, and you can start thinking about food in a different way, you're well on the first step to, to uncovering this and unlocking this because you'll never get, you'll never unlock this aside from like maybe short spurts randomly if you don't change your mentality around food. So I'm not saying like, oh, just like Wusa, if you just think about food differently, it'll be different, bro. Like that's not it at all. But like it takes a, ment- a, sh- a, sh- a mental shift in order to even understand or start looking at food or start like, because if your if your metric is always, what is my relationship with gravity? Oh, I ate pasta. Now my now my weight is up because of whatever, in water, sodium, doesn't matter. Then you're gonna feel like a failure. If your relationship with food is, I wonder how I'm gonna feel about after this meal. And then we can start manipulating it to be tired, more tired after dinner, more energetic after lunch, all day energy from breakfast then we're right on the path. So I'm going to give you right now um, six different steps, six different um, ways that you can unlock your body's hidden mechanism. But really it starts with the one thing. It starts with the one thing is the mindset, changing your mindset around food. So just give you a little background on like the scientific aspect of this outside of the mindset thing is that carbs are your body's preferred source for energy. Always have been, probably always will be. Carbs are delicious. We like to use them for what I call high impact activities. That's all I'd like to think about them. So Carbs are great for fueling running. So you're going to go do a triathlon. If you're going to do lift weights, all carbs are fantastic for those things. But you don't have to go full keto in order to switch from burning carbs to burning fats. I'll, so when I was uh, when I was 17, on my 17th birthday, um, I had a friend. So I had a bunch of guys over. We were having a swim party. I live in Arizona. So like swim parties, my birthday is July 31st. So like prime summertime swim parties that was like the mo it was the best so that swim party just babes and bros and other stuff probably i don't know barbecue i don't remember but one thing i do remember about that day was that um like my driveway was like this kind of like at an angle and one of my friends had pulled up his car and parked across the driveway so like if if your car's supposed to go straight up he kind of make this big sloping like you into the driveway so he's parked blocking like all three of the 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 driveways, the garages. Anyways, I was like, you know, ha, what a funny joke, Patrick. Let me show you one thing about being funny. Or so I got into his car, I took, I put it into neutral, and I started pushing it from the front. So what happened is it started dropping down my, my like started going down the driveway. I was gonna push it into like the rocks, something like that. But he had cranked the wheel so hard it was starting to go back the other direction, make this giant inverted C. And so after about, you know, one, two, three seconds, I was like, oh, I made a terrible mistake. I got to go get in the car and, and break it because it's going much too fast now. I don't know if you know about cars, but they're much, they're faster than people generally. Um, so I was not able to get to the car. And instead I sent this car down my driveway where I ran into my other friend's car, basically like tore up the entire side. It just like scratched all along the side, tore up like three panels of the car, like, so for like being like a pretty minimal, like, like hit it, like it wrecked the entire side of this Volkswagen dog. So I tell you this because, um, this is when I got my first, my first real job that paid me money is I started working at Albertsons as a bag boy, which is glamorous, super glamorous. So as a bag boy, you have to do everything that no one else wants to do in the, in that. So like, you know, be nice to bag boys. They're not having a good day anytime you see them. Um, but one of the things we had to do is restock the fridge. And so when we went to go restock the fridge, like the big thing we had to do was um, make sure that we adhere to the, the FIFO mentality, which means first in, first out. So if I had, if I have like milk or whatever, I couldn't just put new milk in front of it. 
I had to take the new, the old milk out, put the new milk in the back and then put the old milk in front of it. So that kind of like on a, like on a, like first come first leave basis, that milk was getting pulled out. So I don't have one like milk sitting in the back from like September, 2017 that no one's drinking. And it's also like disgusting. So, right. Just like, that's how grocery stores work. Bodies are similar, right? So like, it kind of goes with the first in first out mentality. So if you're always eating carbohydrates, your body is always going to be using carbohydrates as fuel. This is why so many people go on keto and go, oh my gosh, I got such great results. They didn't know that they can still eat carbohydrates and have this and like get great, great results without like the pain of cutting out an entire food group and the rebound effect that comes from, from like going full keto, that sort of thing. So what I, like, so I say this, the whole, the whole story about uh, the car and the Albertsons, this is all true, by the way. Um, just to say that like when you are always consuming and putting things in front of it, that milk in the back, that fat, that body fat that you have back there is never getting taken care of. It's always just sitting back there, just as storage, waiting for someone to come buy it. But if you're putting four or five gallons of milk in front of that in the form of carbs, bagels, pasta, or beers, then it's never going to get taken care of because your, your body's always going to pull the first thing that it's on the shelf. So you got to actually give it a second so you can actually, so you can go through your current like fuel source all the way to the back, the last preferred fuel source to burn more fat. And here's the ways of doing that. Okay. So number one, number one way of doing this, train consistently. Building muscle is going to build your metabolism and building that work capacity, ability to, to move your body through space, to actually have muscle that needs calories to sustain it is going to um, instruct your body to maintain and even build more vibrant energy. So um, one pound of muscle, which is a lot of muscle, to be honest with you. Think about one pound of beef. Slap that on your arm, like it's going to look different, right? God, this office always shuts the light off. When I'm in it. Um, so when, if you think about one pound of muscle, it can hold 11 grams of glycogen, okay? So that's about 40 calories worth of bread, right? So about a half a piece of bread. So during the day, it can just like hold on to that, which is, it doesn't sound like a lot, but now you think about it, you've gained 10 pounds of muscle over a couple of years. Now your body can hold an extra 400 calories worth of carbohydrates and blood sugar um, and to enable yourself to um, like be able to access fat faster. So you're no longer having to like hold on to like to burn through that, that muscle glycogen to, to be able to, to get to the fat. You actually just are storing it in the muscles for your, when your muscles are like, okay, now it's time to work out. We burn the fat, we burn the, the glycogen then but we have the ability to, to shuttle and partition those nutrients to access the fat stores faster, right? So we're able to take those carbohydrates so that we're not sitting around with our like blood sugar levels going up and down all day. We put those into the, into your muscles and then you're able to access the fat for the fuel faster. Okay. So building muscle is critical to long-term success, building your metabolism. And also the work capacity that comes from that is great for just general energy building, right? A power plant doesn't have energy. It creates energy. Same way with when we go to the gym and we work out, we're telling our body, Hey, we're going to need more energy later on. I'm probably going to be trapped underneath a heavy, a heavy tree or something like that. Have you seen Batman? Maybe it's burning like, like a, log or something from your house, you're going to have to lift it up. So you don't, your body's going to need to be able to create the energy that it needs to adapt at that time. Number two is cardio. I used to, used to be a big cardio believer. I actually wrote an article back in like 2013 called, called doing cardio for fat loss is, is about as effective as stapling reminder notes to your eyeballs. Um, it was not one of my most uh, popular articles for some, for some reason. I think it's probably because the title was too long and that's the only reason. I still don't think cardio is the number one thing for fat loss, but I do think cardio has a place in all of our programs, especially if you're over 30, 35, you got kids at home, you need to be able to chase down like obstinate toddlers. You need to be able to go be able to grab a dog that's like, that's running away. We need to be able to throw down to pick up basketball with our friends. And you know, you need to be able to run up the office stairs. Let's be honest, like all those things are really, really important. And cardio is a great way of doing that. If your cardio lacks and, you, and you're sucking wind going up a flight of stairs, you're never going to have as much energy as you want. So having that, like that work capacity and the cardio critical for success, critical for more energy. And that is not even like, I know I talked about like talking about like via fat incineration, I get to that more in a second, but cardio is just incredibly powerful for keeping you feeling like superhuman, keeping you young long-term. Yeah. All right. So let's get into the, like the actual ways of helping your body burn more fat. I'm going to talk more about nutrition here. 
So this is the third, the third best way is uh, proteins and fats in the AM are a great way to help switch your body into a mode of burning more fat. And when you, when you give your body fats, it's going to start utilizing those fats because that's the next best thing to burn um, instead of instead of carbohydrates. So rather than getting at carbohydrates where now you're, it's like, okay, well, I got, I, you ate a banana, let me burn off the banana first. You're just giving it some fat. So it's gonna be like, it's gonna start going through not just dietary fat because it's hard to break that down, but it's gonna pull from stored fat because it's already mobilized and it's already easier for your body to pull from like fat stores, fat cells, than it is to turn that fat into stored fat and then mobilize it. So you're gonna, you're creating a better system internally. Protein also very hard to use as a fuel source. It takes about 30% of its energy. So if you eat a hundred calories of chicken and you want to, and your body's like, Hey, we need to turn that into fuel. It takes, it's going to burn off 30 calories. So you're only going to be able to use the 70 calories of that, of that uh, chicken as fuel. So very inefficient. Your body doesn't like that. That's another reason why it's almost impossible to gain fat from eating too much protein. Almost, almost. So like, you're never going to like, Oh, I ate too many chicken breasts. I gained weight. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. So think about this as having like a time release energy for breakfast. So giving ourselves that like that nice slow buildup where we're never getting this big spike of blood sugar or insulin, which are kind of the two things that, that control our energy and our mood to a certain extent. So having a healthy protein and have a high fat meal in the, in the morning will allow you to have great energy and great focus all day. You'll also notice if you're doing this right, you'll be able to delay lunch a little bit longer. So like rather than being hungry at 10, 30, 11, you'd be like, I'm not hungry until 12, 30 or one. And that's how you know you're on the right track here. That's how you know your body is using fat for fuel. So if you if you started, if you're always hungry two hours after you eat, your meals aren't, aren't correct. They're not big enough or they don't have the right macronutrient ratios. And it can be one of those, uh, any one of those options. And if you're like, I'm not sure which one it is, shoot me an email, Nate at NA Training Systems or drop a note in the group. Love to talk with you about it. It's very, because it's like, once you know it, it's a lot like, you know, bringing awareness to something it like kind of gives you, you'll never unhear it. So like, if you've always heard, it, it's like, don't go Jason waterfalls. And you're like, Jason, where is he going? What's he even up to? And then you hear, it's like, okay, it's chasing waterfalls. Thanks. Destiny's child. Whatever. Then you start to, you start to really understand that it's a, like it, like bringing awareness, it means you can never unhear that thing. So, all right, next, next thing. Number four, carbs at night. Okay. So really eliminating a lot of the carbs during the day is a very important way of teaching your body to burn fat for fuel. So if we're having our body, we're eliminating carbohydrates. So your body doesn't have that first in first out mentality with you, with its, with its preferred energy source. It's going to pull more from fat stores during the day. And then what's going to happen is that as you've burned out some of those fat stores, you've utilized some of the muscle glycogen that you have some of like the carbohydrates that you've stored either in your liver or the muscles. Now at nighttime, you replenish those and utilize that as a way of sleeping deeper. So we want to make sure that when you're having that carb source, we're thinking about going back to our question, like, what do we want from this meal? PM meals, we want to shift into a rest and digest state. We don't want to be wired at 9 PM. You know, we want to be able to start winding down, letting our body naturally fall asleep. And when you sleep deeper, you burn more fat. When you wake up with more energy, you burn more fat. So having this as a, as a key component of your program is so clutch and creates such like two things, it creates more fat burn, more results, which is great, but it also creates sustainability because who doesn't want to have carbs at night? If you're always like, okay, you can only eat meat and vegetables. You can be like, okay, great. I can do that for seven days. And then I'm about to punch you in the face. And that's not what I want. I want this something to be sustainable for you. That's going to be last you long-term because let's, let's be honest, results are dumb. Results, results are unimportant. Woohoo! Yeah, I said it. Results are unimportant. And the reason the results are unimportant is because anyone who's watching this, anyone who's listening to this right now can get good results in their fitness. They can drop a ton of fat by only eating tilapia and asparagus. But what kind of a lifestyle is that? That's some bullshit. That sounds horrible and it's never gonna last. So sustainable results rule. And if, sustain, if sustainability means increasing the amount of carbs you have at night, so that way you can actually eat pasta, bread, pizza, tacos, all these things that you actually love and enjoy, then that's what we want to do. We want to keep it going. Number five, supplements. There's some supplements here that I'm going to, I'll give you a hint right now. None of them are fat burners. None of them are caffeine pills, but there's some supplements here that can really help with, with 
continuing to allow your body to create energy through fat burn and through other me mechanisms as well. Number one supplement is going to be vitamin C. Vitamin C is a great way to build your immune system, ensure that your, your uh, veins stay elastic, which is really interesting, as well as keeping your keeping you really alert. Vitamin C is, uh, is just a clutch, just something, a clutch that you can have on a regular basis. And if you have too much, it doesn't matter. Your body just pees it out. Vitamin D3, especially if you have that with K2, make sure that if you're buying D3, do the drops, get them with K2. Uh, if you want to know which ones I take, I can put a link in. Um, having those in the, in the morning, because vitamin D3 suppresses melatonin production, which is something that happens at night. So don't take your drops at night. We want to have natural melatonin production so we fall asleep, again, shifting to that rest and digest state. And then in the PM, taking a zinc and a magnesium. By the way, vitamin C doesn't matter when you take it. Zinc and a magnesium is a great way to help with hormone optimization, recovery, sleeping deeper. And all of those create more energy for your body. Because if you can sleep deeper, if you can stay in those like deeper states of sleep for longer, you're going to wake up feeling more refreshed and invigorated. Very important. Um, the one thing about zinc and magnesium is that we don't want to take any like an oxide or a, like a fluoride, anything that ends in iod we don't like. But if you're, um, there's a couple different types of magnesium that, that can work. And one just cheater way of knowing is if it ends in eight, like, like a taurinate, gluconate, those are good options for, for magnesium. Just don't get the oxides because that's a great way to ensure that the magnesium helps you poop a lot. And that's not what we're really looking for. Um, again, I have, a, I have two different types that I've taken before that I've felt the effects of in my sleep and I can post those links below. Another reason to be in the group, links, everything is set up, makes your life a lot easier. Um, and then the last one, number six. And I saved this one for last because it's boring. It's boring and you already know it, but it's water. God, I always say this. You're always talking about water. The most boring and the most effective tip of all time. Everyone hates this because it's free and easy. But if your body is dehydrated, you probably feel like hot garbage. Actually, no, you know what? You absolutely feel like hot garbage. No one dehydrated can feel their best. Think about that. No one, if you're dehydrated, can feel your best. So if you're dehydrated, you're already playing from, from behind. You're already playing from a position of weakness. So you need to get back to the being hydrated. And one easy way to do that is just by starting your day with 32 ounces of water per the, the seven daily investments in the book. And then having another 32 ounces before you hit noon. That's one easy, easy way to make sure that you're getting the, the results that you're looking for. So those last, I'm just going to go through those again. Um, train consistently, have your resistance training um, regimen in effect. Do enough cardio to make sure that you're not wheezing going up a flight of stairs. That's so important. Proteins and fats in the morning. Easy way to do this is with a protein shake. Carbs at night, save your carbohydrates for the PM. It's gonna change how you view food and change how you think about your sleep, your energy. It's, it's just powerful. Don't go full keto, do the cheater keto, do this way. Number th five supplements, vitamin C, vitamin D3, zinc and magnesium. Again, these are all like, I'm just giving you the cheapest, easiest, most simple options. You don't need to go get a proprietary blend, take a bunch of thermogenics or fat burners. That shit's stupid. Here's the easiest way. Follow me for more, for more fitness advice you can do for free. Um, and then water, drink more water because if you're dehydrated, you're feeling like shit and there's, there's no way to feel your best, burn as much fat as possible um, if you're de dehydrated. The last thing about water is that it takes 11 gallons of water to burn a pound of fat. 11 gallons of water uh, and 28 uh, pounds of oxygen to burn one pound of fat to satisfy the law of conservation of mass. So if you don't have, if you don't have enough water in your system, you're not burning fat anyway. So water is, is essential to the mobilization of fat. So I can't harp on this enough. Drink your water in the morning, drink your water in the afternoon, then drink it again later. Guys, if you had any questions on this, if you have any thoughts about, about how you can do this in your own life, or if you're like, literally just spell this out for me, drop me a note, drop me a note either in the Facebook group or shoot me an email, nate at n8trainingsystems.com. I would love to help you out. Um, and then here's two ways that I can help you uh, with your fat loss for free. Number one, join the group, go to n8trainingsystems.com slash group to join us there. So many free resources, so many things that can help you along your, along your journey. And plus a community of, of like-minded high achievers 
dads, entrepreneurs, business owners across the board. It's incredible. The, the community is so powerful. Don't sleep on that. And then the last one is grab a copy of my book. If you're a part of the group, I'm going to set you up for it for free. Uh, you can get the PDF version. I'll send it right over to you. Just let me know. So that's a free way that you can start making strides towards your results that you're looking for today. Join the group, grab the book. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you have any other questions, I would love to answer them in the group and we'll talk about it soon. With that, have an amazing day. Bye.